Hi, Love and Gray. Welcome to our virtual class. And today we will learn a new uh, topic, always based on the verbal topics. Uh, remember that we learn two different verbals: the participle verbals that they act as an adjective in the sentence, and the gerund that they act also as a subject object of the sentence too, uh, and in many other different ways. So um, today. We will learn the last one of our verbals, and this one is the infinitives. So let's see what infinitives are. They are, the formula of this is to, the word to, plus the verb in infinitive. Okay, the base form of the verb. And we will see some examples of it. Um, an infinitive can work as a noun, as an adjective, and as an adverb too. So we will see what kind, um, what kind of examples we have after this. So let's see some rules. Please uh, take note of these ones. The infinitive rules. Their center is around two plus a verb in infinitive or in base form. The verb is naked. The infinitive form. That means no endings in ing, no endings in ed, no endings in nt, or other endings that we already learned. Uh, for example, to go, to sit, to talk, to run, to jump, as you can see, to plus the verb in infinitive. Can be used as a noun, an adjective, or an adverb. However, the infinitive may function as a subject, as a direct object, as a subject complement, as an adjective, or as an adverb in a sentence. So please be careful. Do not confuse infinitives with prepositional phrases. Be very careful with that. Prepositional phrases mainly use uh, a noun after the word to, for example, to school, to me, to us, to them, to lunch, and other examples. So please do not confuse, uh, do not uh, get confused on this because we will always use an infinitive to plus a verb in infinitive. Now let's see some examples here. To wait seemed foolish when decisive action was required. So to wait, it's working as a subject. That infinitive is, is understood as a subject. Everyone wanted to go, that is a direct object. His ambition is to fly. It is working as a subject complement, like the ambition was to fly. Ambition is the subject and the complement is to fly. He lacked the strength to resist, that is the adjective. What kind of strength? Oh, the strength to resist, like the, the, like, um, the resist strength. We must study to learn. It works as an adverb. How can we study or why can we study for? To learn, okay? Their decision was to combine. That is a predicate nominative, and um, as you, if you are asking what is a predicate nominative or nominative, um, we will always find um, we will always find a helping verb, a helping verb in the middle of the sentence that connects to two parts of the sentence, right? So was is a helping verb uh, that connects their decision with to combine. So was is a Lincoln verb, which is helping the sentence to make sense. So that's why it's a predicate nominative. In case you guys find this, um, well, I tell you that you will find it in your book. You will find it there. Now let's continue. Um, now, an infinitive phrase is a group of words consisting of uh, an infinitive or um, their modifiers and other words. So we will see some examples right now for you to understand what a infinite or what an infinitive phrase um, is or looks like. So the first one says, "We intended to leave early." The infinitive phrase functions as the direct object of the verb intended. Can you see the verb intended there? 
So to leave is the infinitive and what follows after that verb is what we are going to see. So it is working as a, as an adverb, okay? It is working as an adverb. Early is an adverb. So how are we intending to do it? Um, we are doing, we are intending to do it early. Now, the second one says, I have a paper to write before class. The infinitive phrase functions as an adjective modifying paper. To write is the infinitive before class is the prepositional phrase as an adverb. So it is, uh, it is working as an adjective. The first one was working as a direct object and now it is working as an adjective. I know it's kind of tricky, but if we go deep into um, the book and into the exercises or into any other um, resource we have from this topic, we will get it, okay? I'm just giving you the basis right now. And, and uh, this topic is a very deep topic. It's a very like large topic to learn, but I'm giving you the basis and, and how to understand it, okay? Now, um, as you can see in the second one, we have a prepositional phrase because we have a preposition, which is before. So um, we have an infinitive and we also have a prepositional phrase. Now in number three, Number three, I was about to say number third. <laughs> In number three, Phil agreed to give me a ride. The infinitive phrase functions as the direct object of the verb agreed. To give is the infinitive and me is the direct object of an action expressed in infinitive. A ride is a direct object. Yes, it's kind of tricky, but we can do it. Now, let's see. So, some famous infinities are these ones. To be or not to be, that is a question. To know me is to love me. You've got to live a little. And I want to hold your hand. I, I've only just begun to fight. So I just wanted to give you some um, wanted to give you some infinitive uh, famous phrases, and actually we are going over, yeah, <laughs> I'm going back to the beginning, and this was infinitive, my friends, and don't worry, just go over these um, these exercises too that I will let you hear. So the first exercise will be I have your book here. The first exercise will be exercise twelve in which you have to identify only the infinitive phrases, okay? It says, uh, write the infinitive phrase that appears in each of the following sentences. You don't have to say if it is an adjective, if it is an, a verb, I mean an adverb or a noun, you just have to say, okay, this one is the infinitive phrase. So remember we have two, and I'll put it here. We have two plus a verb, one more time, two plus a verb in infinitive. So that is the only thing you have to do in the first one, in the exercise number 12, to identify the phrase, okay, the phrase. Remember that it has other modifiers, other subjects, or other nouns. And in exercise number 13, what you have to do is recognizing the function. Over there, yes. Over there, what you have to do is this one. I will show it to you. This one, okay, something like this. Like, is it a subject? Is it, is it a direct object? Is it working as a uh, subject complement or as an adjective? So you have to be very careful when um, you will analyze these exercises. So if you guys got any questions, I will be here with you. Um, I will be here just to um, teach you or to answer any questions. So thank you for being here, uh, 11th grade, and I'll see you soon.